Hey everybody, my name is Rob Lava and I recently graduated from the Life Sciences program at McMaster University, specializing in biology and psychology, neuroscience and behavior. One thing to note about the Life Sciences program, if you weren't aware already, is that it is a general program where you uh, do a general in first year and then you're able to specialize going into your second year if you would like. The advantage of a general program is that it's good for people who maybe aren't really sure what they want to do coming out of high school and it gives you a chance to you figure out what courses you really are interested in and which ones you really don't like. Um, the difficult part about this of course is that you know if you're required to take chem, bio, physics, etc in first year there's probably a course that you're going to struggle with and it's hard to get really high grades in all those courses compared to other programs which can be challenging if you know your end goal is to apply to med school in the long run. Um, life science is also very, very good if you're interested in doing research at some point, as there are a lot of opportunities in upper year courses, um, whether you're trying to do a thesis or another research project. And in general, um, it is a very helpful program. It's a very big program, so it'll be easy to find someone that's in the program that's willing to help. Um, so I wouldn't be too worried about, you know, people being very competitive and cutthroat. In terms of how the content is delivered, um, depending on the course, there are many different methods, including online modules that you have to watch, in-person lectures, tutorials, which are smaller classes where it's easier to ask questions and meet others, and labs that you have to do like in chemistry and physics. Uh, in general, because there are so many different methods of learning, it is relatively fast paced. Um, there are a lot of due dates to worry about, and so it's important to stay organized. So if you need to you know, make a Google Calendar or whatever works for you, I would highly recommend doing that. In terms of kind of career perspectives when you're graduating from this program, there are three main streams that people tend to go down. Number one is professional school. So think of like med school, uh, dentistry, things like that. That's a very common uh, choice and something a lot of people wanna do when they first enter this program. Another really popular choice is grad school. Um, people tend to either get their master's or PhD because they're interested in the research they're doing during their thesis and want to continue down that road. Uh, finally, some people go into industry where they're working, let's say, with a pharmaceutical company or in a laboratory or they're consulting in a science or healthcare industry. So that's another option if you, you're kind of done with school and you'd like to start working right away. Um, Co-op, it's very dependent on what specialization you choose. I personally didn't do one, but I highly recommend it if you have the opportunity to. It teaches you a lot about uh, what you might be interested in, and it also is a great thing to put on your resume. And then finally, uh, there isn't really a, uh, a really formal recruiting process in sciences. Um, you kind of go at it at your own pace, and a lot of it is looking externally. So my, my recommendation for that is just getting as many experiences as you can if in the first four, three or four years so that you're a good candidate for whatever you choose to do. In terms of uh, the courses that you're going to take, uh, it is very general in first year, as I mentioned, you're going to be taking psych, chem, physics, bio, and uh, calculus. And so I personally recommend taking, uh, first, sorry, a lot of these courses have like a first semester component and then uh, a second course, a second semester component as well, if you'd like. So I would recommend taking most of the courses in first semester um, that are mandatory, um, feeling out which ones you like and which ones you don't. That way, um, the ones that you do, you can take the second um, component that may be required if you uh, for upper your courses, where for other courses, let's say for me, I'm not a big numbers guy, so I do not enjoy physics and, and calc. You, you, would, you wouldn't take the second part because you're not enjoying it. Um, in general, take both bios if you can, take both chems. Those are required for most upper year science courses. So those are um, go-to courses, I would say. I think this is a big question a lot of people have. You know, obviously there's a big uh, learning curve from high school where a lot of people didn't even have to study to do well. Um, for me, what worked well, and it took me a while to figure it out, but what really worked was reviewing the content before class if possible to give yourself a bit of context about what you're going to be learning. In lecture, it's important to really pay attention. So shutting off your phone, not looking at it and really taking good notes on what the prof is emphasizing. So it's more about quality over quantity in terms of note taking. And then finally, and probably the most important point is to review those notes while they're fresh. 
Um, don't wait until the midterm to look at your notes. Review them after class so that way when the next lecture comes up for that class, you know what's going on and uh, you're able to keep up. And that alleviates all the pressure when it comes to midterm studying because the content, you already know it and it's very fluid. Uh, in terms of kind of other uh, things other than academics, um, I lived in residence in first year. I was in a traditional style called Brandon Hall. And I think some of the pros of living in residence is I think the food for one, uh, there are a lot of good food options that are close by and ready to go. So you save a lot of time rather than having to cook every meal yourself. There are a lot of opportunities to meet friends in res buildings and it's a lot of fun, especially on the weekends, I'll tell you that. Uh, some of the cons though, you know, it's distracting having friends so close by that you could easily bug instead of studying on a weeknight. And it can be a little overwhelming having a roommate. Sometimes you need that personal space yourself and it's hard to get in residence. Some go-to spots at McMaster in general, uh, I think the biggest one is BSB Field. It's a big green space in the middle of campus and people go there to hang out, have lunch, and maybe throw a frisbee around on a nice day. It's just a, it's a really nice place to, uh, to have some downtime. And then finally, in terms of this regard, I would recommend uh, if, you're, if you're into sports, joining some intramural teams, uh, maybe join any academic clubs that come to mind or uh, volunteering your time somewhere. Uh, it's a great way to you know, feel good about yourself and get a break from academics, uh, something to throw on the resume, which is always important. And it's also a really great way to meet friends um, at McMaster. In terms of resources that are available to you, honestly, it's been a long time now. It's been about five years since I was in first year uh, and I didn't use the resources as much as I probably should have. Uh, but I remember McMaster always had many, many great resources. So for example, they just opened up a new building a couple of years ago uh, after I left called the Peter George Center for Living and Learning. And there's a brand new wellness center in there. So whether you need to see a doctor for a prescription or you need to chat with someone, they're always happy to listen. There's also the Faculty of Science that uh, can help you if you have any academic concerns, like if you need to defer a midterm. Uh, Musk, so uh, the Student Center. Uh, there's a lot of good resources in there. Uh, they can help you with LGBTQ needs, or if you have female needs or anything like that, um, there are great resources there for you. Um, Gilmore Hall, if you have any financial questions, um, they can help you with OSAP. Um, they're there to help as well. And then finally, I attended a few international dinners actually in my last year. Uh, they were every Fridays, I think every two weeks, and they're a great way to have a good meal and meet other international students as well. Um, I think that study method would have helped my grades for sure in first year, but you know, it takes time to figure out what works for you. Um, I think making sure that you make time for your friends is very, very important. Um, whether you have a significant other or you're distracted by school because it's stressing you out, make time for your friends because they're a great resource to have. And uh, I think another thing too is finding an outlet that works for you. So for me, I, yeah, you know, I enjoy uh, going to the gym, playing sports. So find something that works for you and helps you alleviate stress. And then finally, just a general tip, drink lots of water, whether it's on the weekdays or weekends, you can never have enough water. And it's definitely a lot cheaper than buying, uh, you know, water, Gatorade, pop, whatever, or sorry, I think I said water, but <laughs> it's cheaper than buying pop and Gatorade and juice and whatever else. So you'll save on your meal plan card. Um, so I think that's everything that I wanted to share with you today. Uh, but I wish you all of luck if you're applying to university this year. Uh, and if you're applying to McMaster, I wish you luck for sure. Um, and yeah, so take care.